Well, thank you for joining us here today. This is an exciting time in our city. Over the last few months, my office has embarked on our Color SLC project, which takes ordinary signal boxes like this one you see behind me and makes them public works of art. Our project began with every elementary school submitting student art to cover 28 boxes in every neighborhood in our city. With over 1,100 original works of art, we have created the largest public art project the city has ever seen. We are continuing this effort through the help of local artists like Jan Haworth, Pilar Povel, Paul Butterfield, along with organizations like Utah Pride Center, Youth City, and the YWCA, who have generously donated their work as well. You can see many of these community boxes here on Main Street, along 300 South, and of course, the Pride Center's work displayed on Harvey Milk Boulevard. Today, we are here to celebrate a community box close to my heart. Without question, 2019 will go down as a turning point in the conversation surrounding existential threat of global climate change. This turning point has come not because of actions of governments and politicians, but because of the activism of the world's youth. The student climate strike movement has brought millions of young people to the streets around the world, including right here in Salt Lake City. We have seen people who, who are like Greta Thunberg make incredible efforts to take their message of the dire need for action to the highest levels of global government. Here in Salt Lake City, young people from around the world gathered as part of the United Nations Civil Society Conference just this past August. And the Youth Climate Compact was created, a declaration sent to every UN member to every UN member state demanding action on climate change. Today we honor this work and make permanent their message on the signal box in the heart of downtown. Salt Lake City not only holds up these young people today, but through our work moving forward toward 100% clean energy by 2030, and reducing our carbon output by 80% by 2040, we stand shoulder to shoulder with you. May everyone who passes this corner see the messages of the youth as, as they are written and understand the viable nature of what is possible. May this work inspire others to take action to address the existential crisis we are facing. Actions as simple as utilizing the public transit available here on this street. I want to thank everyone who has participated in the Color SLC program, especially the youth who created the artwork featured on this box today, and all the youth who participated in the UN Civil Society Conference. I'm now gonna turn the time over to one of our amazing leaders right here in Salt Lake City. Hi. I'm Ari Grace and thank you all for coming and I want to really thank you for doing this and just for all of your support and all of your help and for standing with us throughout all of this climate craziness that's been going on. Um, I was looking through old photos on Instagram the other day and I stumbled across one that almost moved me to tears. Uh, we post a picture of everyone in front of the Capitol every Friday, and <laughs> thank you, public transit. All the way over? <laughs> no, we posted. Okay. We post a picture of everyone in front of the Capitol every Friday, and that week it was just a picture of two of us alone in front of the Capitol in the sun. The caption said, really small turnout today, but we met cool protesters from LA and hung up some flyers around town. Shout out to the super nice food truck guy that gave us free cold drinks. Temperatures were around 100 degrees today. If I remember correctly, temperatures reached 103 degrees that day. 
and it was the only day that we've ever considered moving our spot so that we could be in the shade, but everywhere visible at the Capitol is in direct sunlight, so that was not possible. We drank all the water that we had, even though it was kind of burning us because it was so hot, and we were so exhausted from the heat that we couldn't walk up to the Capitol to get any more. That day, it was just two teenage girls holding our signs in the sun, and nobody wanted to talk to us, and it was extremely discouraging. Um, when I saw that picture of just the two of us, I suddenly remembered another picture that I wanted to find. So I scrolled through my camera roll and I found a picture of the September 20th strike, which is what all of these signs are from, where there was an estimated 2,000 people. I was involved with a hundred kabillion other people in planning that strike and we were expecting maybe about 300 and we woke up that morning and we got started and there was 2,000 people. So I looked at those two pictures side by side to see just the two of us alone on that really discouraging day and then 2,000 people up at the Capitol holding signs and banners and it was amazing. We see strikes and marches happening all over the world where groups have thousands or in some cases even millions of strikers. While here for a while we had a good two, maybe three or four people every week. The global movement is growing and the movement is growing in Salt Lake, in Utah and in the U.S. Once young people are educated about the crisis, ecological breakdown, and the destruction of biodiversity, our eyes are open to the extremity of the consequences that we were never told at school or saw on the news. There were headlines earlier in the month that said, Greta Thunberg says climate strikes will not stop until something is done. And while obvious, the headlines are correct. We won't stop until the people in great positions of power make the moves necessary to keep our planet under 1.5 degrees of warming. We'll continue holding signs that say climate action now and chanting unite behind the science until our nation unites behind the science and takes climate action. The movement is rising alongside the sea levels and the anger in the youth's souls that, about what has been done to our future. Even despite our efforts, the world continues to move backwards like Wolverine Resources who are reopening a coal mine here in Utah. And that is why we strike and why we aren't stopping. And the more youth understand what rising emissions mean, the more of us there will be because despite now having a political connotation, this is science. And once we understand science and why we must unite behind it and then do so, that is when we'll change the world. Thank you. Good job. So uh, if you want to talk, do one-on-ones, that's great. Um, but I think we want to get a photo. And Mitch, who was uh, a chair for the United Nations Youth Group, do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I do, I guess. Tell them. I'm, I mean, I, hi, so I'm Mitch Dumke, uh, community, mem community member in Salt Lake City, and uh, was honored to be a part of the Youth Society, the Youth Subcommittee of the Host Committee for the United Nation Civil Society Conference that was, take, took place in August. Uh, thank you for your words. You're inspiring. I wish that I was the third person that sat with you that day, so but I'm grateful for how much it's grown. Uh, the, the experience that we had in Salt Lake in August and what's happened since has been really moving to be able to see how many people are having a dialogue now that didn't know what was happening in Salt Lake, the, the dialogue that was occurring from a global perspective and how it's persisting in a local perspective now after the conference is finished. And, you know, in, in my workplace, in the tech space, we have a lot of room to grow to make sure we're making sustainable choices in the way we act and that we can follow other countries that are making stronger decisions in the tech community. And that's something that I hope we can do uh, in Salt Lake as well and something that we're really making a movement towards. Thank you. Thanks.